Welcome to Electron Online, and in this video we're going to show you how to find the roots of a complex number once it's put into a polar form. So let's say we have a complex number that looks kind of like this and then we convert it to polar form it'll look like this and if we take the root of that let's say the nth root of z is z to the 1 over n power that would be equal to r to the 1 over n power times the cosine of the angle plus 2k times pi divided by n and of course is the root plus i times the sine of theta plus 2k pi over n and again the root for various values of k k is going to be equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on, all the way up to n minus 1. So let's say that the root is 6, you would have 6 values for k, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It would end at n minus 1. So there would be 6 roots if you take r to the 1 over 6 power, or z over to the 1 over 6 power. So we're going to do an example of that number right there. So it's kind of complicated. If you take the nth root, there are six possibilities if you take the or n possibilities if you take for example the tenth root of a complex number there would be ten roots to be looking for wow that's a lot of work but let me show you how to do that so as the example we're going to find z to the one over six power so there will be six different roots we're going to have to find so notice here that if z is minus 64 plus 0i, you say, well, why is that a complex number? Because it only has a real part. Sure enough, but if I assume that to be a complex number, then we can see that that means that r is equal to 64 and theta is equal to pi because, of course, if you take a look at the, uh, at the polar coordinates, if you have a number right here that is minus 64, that means that we have an angle of 180 degrees, which is equal to pi radians. So indeed, the angle is pi, and r, the distance from the coordinate, from the zero coordinate point to the uh, point of interest, that would be a distance of 64 in the negative direction. All right, so how do we put that in a polar form? That means that z is going to be equal to the distance, 64, times the cosine of pi, Oop, I would say pi, but write theta, so the cosine of pi plus i times the sine of pi, like that. Okay, so now we're going to have to find the six roots. So how do we do that? Well, there'll be six. So let's say root number one, or root number zero. I'm going to find root sub zero because we're going to let k equal zero for the first time. So that means that, means that z, sub 0, the, the, the first root, z sub 0, is equal to 64 to the 1 over 6 power, because we want to find the sixth root, times the cosine of pi divided by n, which is 6, plus i times the sine of pi divided by 6. And of course, 64 to the 1 6 power, that would be the, the, one, the uh, 64 to the 1 6 power. Let's see here, that's 2 to the 6 power 64, that would be equal to 2 times the cosine of pi divided by 6 plus i times the sine of pi divided by 6. So that would be the first root of that complex number. Now let's find the other 5. Okay, so z sub 1, that would be equal to 64 to 1 6 power, which again would be 2, times the cosine of, notice we're going to add 2k pi, and next k is going to be 1. So we're going to add 2 pi to that, so it would be pi plus 2 pi divided by 6 plus i times the sine of pi plus 2 pi divided by 6. So this would be 2 times the cosine, so it would be 3 pi divided by 6, which would be pi divided by 2 plus i times the sine of pi divided by 2. And so that would be the second root. Okay, do it again now, but now we're going to let k equal 2 and see what we get. So z sub 2 is equal to 2 times the cosine of pi plus 4 pi divided by 6 plus i times the sine of pi plus 4 pi divided by 6. And of course, that would be 5 pi divided by 6. So we get 2 times the cosine of 5 pi divided by 6 plus i times the sine of 5 pi divided by 6. So that would be the third root. All right. We keep on going, now we're going to let k equals 3. Next number in line. So z sub 3 is equal to 2 times the cosine of pi plus 6 pi over 6 plus i times 
the sine of pi plus 6 pi over 6. So that would be equal to 2 times the cosine of 7 pi divided by 6 plus i times the sine of 7 pi divided by 6. All right, that would now be the fourth root. Two more roots to go. So z sub 4 is equal to 2 times the cosine of pi plus 8 pi divided by 6 plus i times the sine of pi plus 8 pi divided by 6. Okay, that would be 9 pi divided by 6. 9 is divisible by 3, so it's 6. So it would be 2 times the cosine of 3 pi over 2 plus i times the sine of 3 pi over 2. So 9 divided by 6 can be written as 3 divided by 2. And finally, the last of the six roots, we go z sub 5 is equal to 2 times the cosine of pi plus 10 pi divided by 6 plus i times the sine of pi plus 10 pi divided by 6. Now notice pi plus 10 pi is 11 pi. 11 pi divided by 6 is just not quite 2 pi, which means it's all the roots between 0 and 2 pi. So that would be equal to 2 times the cosine of 11 pi divided by 6 plus i times the sine of 11, oops, of 11 pi divided by 6. And oop, I need some parentheses around there, don't I? If I don't put parentheses around there, I'm not multiplying the 2 times the, both the cosine and the sine. So I've got to put parentheses around there as well. And so there is the sixth root. And that's how we do that. So notice if we put those on a, on a unit circle, you can see that you can find the six roots on the complete circle. So it's within 0 and 2 pi of a complete uh, 0 to 2 pi distance in the angle. So that's how we find roots when we use complex numbers. It's a cumbersome process, but it's not so hard of a process. And you can see how we can easily turn out all six roots in this case uh, using the polar form of the complex numbers.